Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest joining us today. That's right, one of my leaders. We have Nina Turner. Welcome. Send it to Nina Turner. Turner. Show Nina some Turner. damn respect. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Yo, you too. Good morning, baby. How are you? I am fine. I'm so <laughs> glad to be back here with the crew. Happy to have Beautiful. you. Beautiful. Now, everybody wanted to know what your next political move was going to be. Yeah. And now you're running for Congress again. I am. In Ohio, why? You know, because the needs are great. The same reasons that motivated me to run in 2021 during that special election cycle continue to motivate me to run again. I believe that Cleveland, the greater Cleveland area, they need a fighter, somebody that's going to fight with and fight for the people, and so I'm running again. How can we get some of these bills passed in Congress? There's so many things that have been stuck. Like, what needs to happen, and why should people do need to go out and vote? But talk about the importance of that. Yeah, I mean, we definitely need to give people something to vote for. That's right. I mean, that's the main thing. It's a one-sided proposition, I think, sometimes for us to say, yes, people need to vote, and especially if you're black, we understand the historic impact, and import, rather, of, be, or of, of wanting and needing to vote. Also, we need to elect politicians that's going to give people something to vote for. Uh, the quote in vogue, giving them something they can feel. <laughs> we need some material conditions changed. You know, we need some Medicare for all. We need to cancel student debt. We know that people are trying to unionize, like Starbucks workers, for example, both in my state, this state, and all over the country. We had a lot of workers, as you all recall, even last year, just coming together, regardless of their political ideology, they were striking, mm -hmm. you know, for better uh, wages, work conditions, benefits. And so we need the federal government to step up and give people those things that they need to be able to live a good life. And I think if people start to see changes in their material conditions, they will come out to vote more. Is that bipartisan as far as higher wages, livable wages, better working conditions, canceling student loan debt? It should be. I mean, the last time I checked, red districts have poverty, too. They need mm -hmm. people... People need uh, health care. They need their student debt canceled. They need to be able to work in good jobs. To me, this is what we do to help people thrive, you know, get from surviving to thriving. should not be a partisan issue. Now, it has become one, yeah. both in the legislatures and also in the Congress. But it shouldn't be bipartisan. I mean, it shouldn't be partisan whether or not somebody can feed their family or afford their, you know, me medications, for example. That's, that's humanity. That's mm -hmm. about people living a good life. And it's a shame... Uh, to me, it's a shame where we are in this country right now when it comes to that. I, I was going to ask, what's the first thing you want to do when you get to, when you when you win? What's the first thing you want to do? Well, first thing I'm going to do, uh, DJ, is thank the people who put me there. That's mm -hmm. number one. But secondly, I'm going there to continue to advocate for some of the things that I'm advocating right now. You know, you don't need an extra special title to be able to stand up for what is just, for what is right, and for what is good. So I'm going to continue my work. The only thing is when I win, I'm able to continue that work in the halls of Congress. That's right. And that work is standing side by side with workers. That work is speaking a certain type of truth to power. That work is making sacrifices, even if it causes me some heartburn. Mm -hmm. And to say very clearly that what the people of this nation are enduring is a bunch of BS. Wait, I got two questions. It's kind of a two-part question. Where was the Democratic Party headed a few years ago, and where is it going now? Because it feels like progressive priorities have been just left on the cutting room floor. It felt like it was going to be more progressive. I don't, I don't know where it's going right now. Sorry, it was just a. Well, damn it, I hate to put it this way, but some of this stuff was lip service. Mm -hmm. It really was. And I believe that the Democratic Party would embrace the things that they ran on in 2020, even though some of those things are not as far as I would want to go in a freedom fighting direction, I will say. More people would be enthusiastic about getting out there to vote. The folks are in limbo. I mean, couldn't even wage, raise the minimum wage, for example, to $15. They blamed that on the parliamentarian. Mm -hmm. Right now, we don't even hear anybody talking about the, the Floyd George Floyd, George Floyd police. Act. That's just totally That's out gone. the door. Yeah. People are being arrested in D.C. just a couple of months ago for protesting to protect voting rights, which are being eviscerated in legislatures controlled by rotten Republicans all over this country. And you can't even get these people to pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. And this particular problem is particularly in the United States Senate in particular. Mm -hmm. But we have some people who just hide behind this stuff because their quality of life is not going to change one iota. They already live in the high and the good life. So they're not as fighting as hard as they should. 
Democrats must embrace, and we must call out these Republicans too. Yeah, Democrats need to embrace it because they in power. So let me get that straight right now. We are in power and we have an obligation to use that power to lift people, to change their material conditions. But let's not let these ridiculous Republicans off the hook. Right. I, mean, I think the thing about Republicans is we didn't vote for them and we don't expect them to do anything for us. And they're not, they're not the ones making us promises. You know what, Char? That is absolutely true. I, will, I want to put a however, I'm going to put an and to that. Mm-hmm. You are right. And the Republicans should care about the poor people in their district, too. That's a fact. So, but you're right. Democrats have the power and they need to use that power and stop playing games. You know, a few months ago, I said to the, you know, I mean, I, one of the things that I believe that the president can do and should do, and we saw a little bit of that in the State of the Union, but we got to hold the Democratic Party accountable. So if it's only cinema and mansion, then gas up the jet on they behind up. <laughs> and, and, and tell them, look, I'm about to hold a press conference. Now, either you two going to stand by my side and say how you going to support my build back better and let's build back a little better. Or I'm coming to your state and letting the people know who's standing in the way of my agenda. It's like use the bully pulpit that you have to leverage those kinds of folks. And I think it's because we don't hear those conversations is why everybody's so upset at the Democratic, you know, party, because it's like, who are y'all? Because if y'all not speaking out against these two people, then y'all must be with them. Maybe they just the fall, the fall guys and girls. I think in some cases they are for some, but there are some Democrats there who really believe this stuff and fighting. And Congresswoman Cory Bush comes first. Oh, yeah, I know my absolutely. sister was just here. She and I were just rocking in Nevada together, trying to help another one of our sisters, Amy Villella. We got to elect more people who are willing to put something on the line for the people and not just get cozy and comfortable and worried about whether or not they're going to be invited to the damn Christmas party. Forget the Christmas party. Mm -hmm. Because somebody don't have food to eat. Somebody can't afford their rent. Somebody sure enough can't afford gas right about now. I mean, these are real problems that I think really get lost. And the reason why they're getting lost is that we need to elect more people with a lived experience. I have missed a meal or two. I have had to depend on the system both as a child and as an adult as I'm trying to break through. I know what that's like. So my proximity to pain is fully intact. I am a first generation college graduate. So I get those things and I think we need people with more working class experiences in the halls of power Mm -hmm. to leverage that experience on behalf of what is just right and good. So Shar, DJ, ye, it is right. We can both be upset and have higher expect. Make a demand. That's all we say. Mm -hmm. Voters need to hold elected officials accountable even if you like them. Even if you love them, there's nothing wrong with saying, I gave you my power. Yeah. Now I, I need something in return for that. That's right. And you can still like that person, too. Mm-hmm. We get it twisted. Oh, they hating on. No, what we hate on is people suffering in this country. And we gave people power and they need to use it. And this is an awesome opportunity for Democrats to use the power and show the difference between them and the Republicans. And, and, they, and they told us they were going to do these things. Of course, I'm going to hold you accountable. If we you got looked me to. in my eye and told me, yeah. it's what you're going to do. They made the promises. And the things that people like on my side of the Democratic Party are pushing for are not out of the ordinary. In the 40s, President Franklin D. Roosevelt, before he died, he was talking about a second economic bill of rights. And in that bill of rights were things like education, Mm -hmm. decent housing, good jobs. These things are not far-fetched. That was in the 40s. And the majority of the American people who were surveyed at that time were right where he was. And so these days you got people saying that's extremist or socialism. No, baby, that's real. That's what people really need. And not just FDR. You have Mm -hmm. people like the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who built on that, the poor people's movement of all people from all walks of life, all identities. And you have one of the greatest unionists in the 20th 20th century, Asa Philip Randolph. The Asa Mm -hmm. Philip Randolph Institute wrote a whole book about building on the four freedoms that FDR started about creating a budget for everybody. And I just want to, this is real quick, but I, mm-hmm. I just want, I want, your time. I want everybody that's rolling with time. us. It was called, this was in the 60s and the 70s. Nothing is new under the sun. A freedom budget for all Americans, budgeting our resources, 1966, 1975, to achieve freedom from want. And that was them building on the four freedoms. Now, this is Asa Philip Randolph. The leader of the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, the brother who challenged FDR. I mean, he, he wasn't playing with this. This is these are the things. Abolition of poverty. Does that sound familiar? Guaranteed full employment, full protection and high economic growth, adequate minimum wage, farm income parity, guaranteed incomes for all unable to work. So they weren't putting no shade on somebody. Some people can't work. Now mm-hmm. some people can work and don't. We can deal with that. <laughs> but some people can't work. 
a decent home for every American family, modern health services for all, full educational opportunities for all, updated social programs and welfare, uh, excuse me, updated social security and welfare programs, and lastly, equitable tax and money policy. In other words, tax the wealthiest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was the 1960s. Mm -hmm. So for anybody in that Congress to act like what we are demanding is somehow so off course and so radical. They not, it's not radical, it's right. That's right. I, I'm wondering when did speaking up for voting rights and, and wanting some type of voting rights legislation, when did that become a radical Come talking on. point? <laughs> Come on. It's the cornerstone of democracy. And you can't protect that? No. Why are people being arrested in 21st century with, with a whole Democrats all up in control there, even if it's a slim margin? Y'all ain't run on, well, we need to have X number. You said if we give you the majority That's in right. these places, you're going to do these things. Right. So we got to have the heart to be able to assess the Democratic Party, very right, wide-eyed, call out the Republican Party, but not be afraid to say the party that's in control, you ask for the power, you got to use it. And, you know, they don't like that sometimes. That's why I'm not the favorite. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm definitely not the favorite. Child. I was going to ask in your professional opinion, what do you think that's going on when, when you hear Joe Biden saying we're cutting off uh, Russia as far as oil and everything that's going on with Russia and Ukraine? What What, what are your opinion on everything? Yeah, Putin is wrong all day long. It's egregious what he's doing. You're just going to walk up in somebody else's nation yeah. and say, hey, I'm taking you I over. That. Yeah, that's mine. That no, was always sound mine. Sounds like colonization to me. Yeah, it is. It sounds like Europeans to me. <laughs> I mean, so it's wrong what he's doing. And we do have to be in solidarity with the Ukrainian people. We got to put the pressure on Putin. That is one of the ways to do it. And it's a nation, it's a global effort to do just that. But it also reminds us that we have an over-reliance on oil mm -hmm. as well. And so maybe this seeing some promise in this problem, which is a humanitarian problem. Correct. One of the things we can do in this country is decrease our reliance on oil. Let me ask you this, because I have heard a lot of people say, well, why are we getting involved in this? We have all these problems here in the United States. Mm -hmm. We have money to send to Ukraine for weapons and to help them. But why aren't we doing that here at home? So how do you respond well, to something think, like we that? We need to do both. Mm -hmm. Both two things can be true at once. We do need to settle uh, the debt that we owe here domestically by lifting people and giving them things that they can feel and changing their material conditions. And at the same time, we do need to lock arm in arm with the Ukrainian people because, but by the grace of God, that could be us. And I don't want the world to turn its back on Ukraine mm -hmm. just because we have domestic challenges. We can do both of those things and both of those things should be called out. And while we're talking about Ukraine, let's make sure that we say we show the same love and empathy and sympathy for people from black and brown yeah. nations mm -hmm. across this world, because I am terribly disturbed by some of the reports coming out of how our African sisters and brothers are being treated. It doesn't matter if they're from the continent of Africa or they're in the Middle East, Europe, or Asia. If somebody is in need, the world should come mm -hmm. to their rescue, especially mm -hmm. when you have something on the magnitude of somebody just marching up into somebody else's nation trying to take it over. We got to admit that, too, because what happens to black and brown people, we sometimes, we're not treated the same way. I saw Joanne Reed, and I don't want to misquote what she said, but I saw she said something that people were upset about. The reason that people feel so much sympathy for Ukraine is because they're white and Christian. It was something like that. Yeah, I think she and, did say that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, so yeah. what are your well, thoughts about that? Because, you know, I have been seeing all the videos of, of black people and people from Africa, people from India, all kinds of I people have, stuck yeah. in Ukraine, and they've been, you know, trying to get out, and they're not allowing them to get out. They don't want them to come into Poland. And so, and then we see things happening all over the world, but for some reason, this is definitely wrong, but this is something that is so much on the radar. The Eurocentric worldview that has really poisoned society is real. And some people don't have the heart to admit that. Again, two things can be true at the same time. I agree with what Joy Reid had to say. That is true. And people don't want to face that truth. So they get mad at the person that's telling the truth. That That is a truism. We got the receipts for it. She's not making that up. At the same time, that does not mean that we should not be there to right. support the Ukrainian people who this man declared war. It was he wanted to take their land and they are suffering. At the same time, we need the w powers of the world to recognize that indeed they do treat black and brown people differently. 
our lives don't matter. You made me think about the Black Lives Matter movement. Our lives matter too. So the Ukrainian lives matter. So do those of, of, of African descent. Those from India, you know, Asia, all of the continents, those their lives matter, too. And if they're being treated differently, we got to say something about it. Those people should be just as upset as Joy Reid is or I am or others mm -hmm. who care about humanity. If it's about humanity, then don't worry about their phenotype. They're human beings. And there is only one race. Race, as we know it today, is a social contract. It is a bullshit ass social contract. Mm hmm. And we need to call it what it is and fix it. If we are sisters and brothers and family and friends and I'm in need and I'm struggling, why are you going to look at me and say, you black, so you can't come? Mm -hmm. So Ukrainians should be upset about this, and I know some of them are. People in Poland should be upset if somebody being denied entry into their country when you got war going on, if they being denied because of their color, because of their religion, because of their sexual orientation, any of those identifiers that some people use uh, as a as a rationale to hurt other people is wrong. So there should be global outrage right. if Africans are being denied mm -hmm. entry. I into agree. Country. I, I read an article yesterday in the New York Times, and it was it was basically saying that a lot of people don't want America to be the world's police okay. anymore. Oh, okay. So uh, how, how do you feel? How do you feel about that moving forward? Like, how 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 involved should America be getting in in issues like this? Something of this magnitude, when you got war going on, we should get involved. And no, we can't police the entire world. We need to deal with, I mean, back to, to Angela's point, we need to deal with some of the challenges we have here. But you can't have something of this magnitude. I think, think thinking about it outside of this war, then we can have a different conversation. But when you have something of this magnitude, we, we got to get involved. We just have to. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how I feel about it. But we got to take care of home, and we haven't been taking care of home. Gas prices are going up. That means that food prices are going up. Everything is going up. People are suffering. There are Supplies some people who can't afford this, right? The supply demand. Everything. everything. It's a domino effect. People can't get cars right no. now. Imagine no. being oh, a car that will get to work. Or yeah. Yeah, you can't. But I mean, that's everything. why poor people don't, yeah. a lot of poor people here in, in the United States, they don't want to hear about these geopolitical issues. It's very hard for them to watch Joe Biden say, we're sending $10 billion to Ukraine, but basically begging for the Build Back Better plan to happen. We yeah. got enough money to do both. We that's are a right. hegemon nation, and that's all we are saying, or at least that's what I'm saying right now. I think we all are kind of are saying that. Don't neglect home. Charity starts at home right. and spreads abroad. So you do have to show that, that charity and that love here at home before you can spread it abroad. But again, war, because I want nobody misinterpreting what I'm saying. When people are in war-torn countries, we have to help them, but we have so much money, we can actually do both. You know, I was at the New School, and I had the opportunity to participate and do a lecture with some extraordinary women on International Women's Day. And there is an institute there ran by Dr. Derek Hamilton that I, ooh, Breakfast Derek, Club. brilliant. Are you brilliant? Oh, that's my guy. Um, the Institute on Race power and political economy. I mean, he put it all up in the name, baby. And th those are the kinds of things that are being studied there, that there's a class and a caste component, and we can't neglect either. Some people only want to talk about class without talking about caste. So when I talk about caste, I'm talking about race. Both of those things must be done at the same time. And I love how the word power is in the name, because mm -hmm. this is what this is about. Mm -hmm. Who has the power and how they wield the power, and for whom do they wield the power for? We need more conscious-minded people wielding the power on behalf of the people in this country so we can increase the minimum wage, we can cancel student debt, we can have universal health care, and we can help our sisters and brothers and family and friends in Ukraine. We you can do what? it all. I see people also saying, and I want to get uh, your take on this, that if Donald Trump was in office, none of this would be happening. Well, hell, we can't go... Listen, I, I, we don't know. I mean, he had a bromance with Putin. I'll say that. And mm -hmm. and that's wrong because what Putin and he also said that he didn't really mind. I'm paraphrasing his exact words, but he's showing Putin love even in this egregious moment. Right, Putin is wrong. Wonderful. And he wanted to take yeah, America out of there. Yeah, Putin, Putin is wrong. I mean, um, Trump is wrong on this. He's wrong on most of the things that I care about, but he's definitely wrong on this. I don't we can't predict whether or not this would happen. Right. What I do know, based on his past behavior, he would be stroking uh, Putin's ego instead of standing up to Putin saying your invasion of Ukraine is wrong and, and we we and the rest of the world is not going to stand for it. So I can't, I don't know, people just talking that nonsense. It's easy to talk, say that. If you had to give a grade, what would you give uh, as a grade for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? What, what, what would their grade be and why? Well, I want to give the grade that the people would give right now, which is we don't have a minimum wage increase, the child tax credit has expired, 
people are suffering. Their money is not going as far as it could go. The Joe Floyd Policing that's, Act didn't happen. Voting rights isn't right. happening. I mean, Build that's back it. Better have that. I mean, the polls have already <laughs> graded. I mean, we see where well, the, what American, have we gotten? the American people. I think early on, we did get a type of relief from the early part of the COVID when that administration took when they took office, they did do some of those things that they said they were going to do. That's why the child tax credit is so important. That's why we shouldn't let it expire. Mm -hmm. You know, people did get those checks, even though it wasn't the whole $2,000 like it should have been, mm -hmm. but they did get that. So some of those things early on do does show that poverty is a policy choice, that if we could have the child tax credit, then we can have it and make it permanent. Mm -hmm. That if we can, as a nation, say we're going to get shots in arms for free, Mm -hmm. that we're going to have a social contract because nothing is free. But as a social contract, we're going to use tax dollars and make the shots free. Then we can scale that up and do a whole lot of other things in that way. So they do have examples of things that they have done right. that they can expand and do it better and do it stronger. So my grade, DJ, would be based on how the poor, the working poor, and the barely middle class are feeling right now. And they're already speaking out through About the a CD. Hey. I think an F. You, you, think F? Are you all the way F? D minus. <laughs> <laughs> I want to let the American people speak on that. I, I will say that more can be done. Yeah. You know, well, yeah. I'm around that 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 D F. But you know what? As a professor, I would go to my students <laughs> right before the grade and I would say, look at here. This is what you got right now. Do they get a curve? Right. No curve. No but curve. this this is what you got right now. But this doesn't have to be what you have when the class ends. Well, you, you know, but an, 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 and another thing go. that happens, too, <laughs> yeah. though, is that people talk about, and I know you guys have said it on this show, that the Democrats are not good at boosting messaging. up and messaging things that have been done. That's why I was asking that, because we were talking earlier about the HBCU money and grants that people have received. The diversity, you know, it's more diverse than it was previously as far as the cabinet, and there's still a way to go. But, um, you know, that's why I was asking those things, because I want to know what you feel like has been um, positive. We had the infrastructure bill that even yeah. though that was nowhere near everything that we needed for Build Back Better. Yeah, we need. Well, the infrastructure bill is separate from Build yeah, Back they Better. Have to make it. So, yeah, yeah, no, they didn't have to do that. They, they oh, Lord, to get they, anything, because I feel like to get anything passed, like like I was reading Obama's book. Right. Yeah. And he was talking about how hard it was for him to get anything done at all. But, you know, it was a Republican Congress when he was there, and it feels kind of like when we first got there, the Democrats had full control. Let's right. not forget that mm -hmm. President Obama had two years of Democrats control everything. And see, there are building points, and I think that's another reason why people are so frustrated because when Democrats do have the power, they don't necessarily leverage it with the same fierceness that right. the Republicans right. do. But like, towards we'll take the this negative. out, we'll compromise. Yeah, we'll forget take this that. Out, At a certain point, we can't, especially in, in the mm -hmm. face of a pandemic. So, yes, has this administration done some good things? I just enumerated some, so did you. Do I support the, the infrastructure bill? Yeah, but not without Build Back Better because right. there's physical infrastructure and there's human infrastructure, and they sacrifice the human infrastructure. What does it matter to Big Mama to have a paved road when she can't pay her mortgage? Yes. That's right. What the hell? What does it mean to Big Daddy if his job, the money that he's making, doesn't allow him to be able to support his family because I mean, because inflation is so high, his dollar or her dollar is not going as far as it could so or should. So how does this get done? Because that's my question, right? Because Biden acts like his hands are tied. And it's not on him. But yeah. how does it get done? Is it an executive order? But then that's temporary. Like, how does it that's happen? Okay. Use it, baby. Use the Use executive it. order. The president right. is powerful. He can he can cancel student debt right now via executive order, even if it's only 10000 because he said 10000 Right. We, mm -hmm. we got the receipts. He said it. He said 10000 Right. Mm -hmm. You got some senators, even Senator Chuck Schumer, for example, said cancel 50000 mm -hmm. And you got people like me or Senator Sanders saying cancel it all. Cancel all it all. all. <laughs> okay, so we got a, we got a, a lot to choose from. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Do if something. The, let's, if the president even cancel ten thousand dollars do you know what that would do for 45 million people in this country and the disposable income that they would have then to pour back into the economy because now mm -hmm. they have the income to do so you think those people ain't gonna go vote and it's something you can check off yeah. you know the campaign promise you can check it. off it's just yeah. frustrating for me yeah. because i'm trying to figure out why can't you just do it like i feel like certain people would, and it feels like he's just so cautious and tries to say, well, I can't because if it happens like this, and I'm as a person yeah. that, you know, obviously this is not my field, sure. but I'm watching and I'm like, well, how can this happen? Like, what are your options to make it happen? 
Yeah, it's definitely executive order, but it's also the carrot and the stick. Look what Lyndon Baines Johnson was able to do. Yeah, and with he had flaming a lot of the race. Same I mean, he had a lot more. Some of these people are racist undercover. Don't get me wrong, but in his day, you know, in the sixties, they was all out in the open with their stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But he still was able to get the Civil Rights Act passed mm-hmm. and the Voting Rights Act mm-hmm. passed with all of that. That that cultural pressure that was right there in his face, especially with the Southern Southern Democrats. So is that going to different, like, say, Republicans and bartering with them? Like, okay, you want to get this done, so if you get on board with this, then I can help make sure this happens. Like, how does that work? Sometimes you do that. The carrot and the stick does work. But when, you know, I think it was Dr. Maya Angelou who said when somebody shows you who they are, you got to believe believe it. That's right, because Republicans say no to everything. Yeah, he's already done that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Like, that is President Biden's makeup. And I don't begrudge him for that because Mm -hmm. he served with most of these people who are still there. He served with them. So he has a certain kind of way that he wants to do things and handle it. Right. That's okay. He I, tries I, to be I above it and guard it with people, and he feels like he can negotiate to make it However, happen. though, there not comes working. a point <laughs> when they done made it very clear. They don't want to negotiate not with you. That's right. So now, forget the carrot. I got to bring out the stick. That's right. And so first, he got to get his own Democrats in line. We got to straighten cinema and mansion out on certain issues. I'm not saying that members of the Congress have to do in every single thing. They are, they duly elected, too. I served in the legislature. I'm duly elected. The governor, when he was a Democrat, you can't tell me what to do. Now, you can ask me. Mm-hmm. You know, you can I, I, and help me see your vision and your way, and I help you accomplish that. But he got two, at least out in the open. There are other people hiding behind those two. I can guarantee you that, right. that they are. But the two that we know of, he got to hem them up. Mm-hmm. Now, he didn't invite them to the White House. They done went to Delaware. At least one of them did. Damn it, there comes a time when you got to say, I'm not playing with you no more. Right. So this is what I'm going to do. Because, <laughs> see, I done sent you flowers. I done gave you candy. You done been at the White House. No, this is what we're going to do. We're going to hold press conferences. And either you're going to be by my side, the same thing that he could do to hem up these Republicans could go to their states, too, because there are poor people in red states. Yeah, right. Poor people everywhere. Mm-hmm. Blue states, red states, purple states, no color states. They poor and, and, and working class people. Either you're going to stand by my side at this press conference or I'm coming for you. And that's just it. Because what else are they going to do? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they already showing that they absolutely do not give a damn. Right. West Virginia is one of the poorest states in the nation. Manchin had the nerve to talk about the child tax credit being expanded and other things that they wanted to help to lift the material conditions of people. And then he talking about well, they're going to use the money for something else. It ain't none of your business how they use their tax dollars. How dare you? intimate that poorer people somehow will not be responsible and right. meet the needs of their families. That That's a classist thing to say and do. And you got people like Manchin doing that. So they're, the carrot is fine, but baby, you got the work work to stick to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's, I think if people see Democrats fighting like hell for them, even if they don't accomplish it, mm-hmm. to your point, what they going to say is that you know what they tried. Right. They that's worked right. like hell to they get went this hard. for us. They went hard. In the paint. They went ham on these <laughs> fools. I, I often wonder, do they really want change, though? Because you have, like, real shifters out there, like yourself, like Cory Bush, like somebody like Gary Chambers that's, yes, that, that's running. Yes, Gary Chambers. Why don't they support your campaign more? Why don't they support Gary Chambers' campaign more? Feels to me like they don't want to because no, they don't want real change. Some of them. Do not. And you're right, Charlotte. I'll I keep that answer very simple. People like myself and Gary Chambers and Corey Bush and the Amy Villellas of the world and so many others, Ayanna Presley, you know, some of yeah. my sisters are already there, you know, so I just want to shout them out. But we are a threat to the status quo. And some of these people want to maintain the status quo. That's just what it is. I am fighting for a better quality of life. Um, I just, I want to share a quick story. You know, I'm a GMA. Take your time. I'm a GMA. Yeah, take your time. <laughs> Don't have to be a quick story. Take your time. Okay, I'm a GMA. Now, I, I like that. I like the, the, the GMA. In the 20s. <laughs> the GMA. Okay. It's called GMAs. And I have two. I have a two year old and an eight month old. And my two year old loves to put together puzzles. Mm-hmm. I hate puzzles, but because he likes to put together puzzles, now nah, I love to put together puzzles, mm-hmm. you know. And they're relentless. If ever there's a piece to the puzzles, we're putting it together. If ever there's a piece missing, he loses his mind. Yeah, yeah, fine piece. Yeah, yeah, fine piece. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fine piece. So I'm on the floor, pulling off the cushion, <laughs> all rolling on the floor, all up under everything to find that puzzle piece so I can get some peace. Because they relentless. <laughs> right, <that's true. laughs> they, they ain't going to let go. <laughs> find the piece. Everything that I need to know about politics and life, I'm learning from a toddler. Mm. What does my two-year-old understand? Mm. That each piece is different. 
distinct, necessary, and unique. And that if any piece is missing, the full picture cannot be realized. Mm -hmm. Everything that I need to know about politics and life, I am learning from a toddler. Why is he losing his mind because a piece is missing? Because he knows as long as that piece is missing, the puzzle can never be complete. Right. So we need more people who will lose their minds if there are missing pieces. If people can't eat, I'm losing my mind. Mm. If people can't afford their prescription drugs, I'm losing my mind. Mm. If people can't afford to, to, to feed their families, I'm losing my mind. If people are saddled with student debt, I'm losing my mind. If workers can't unionize, I'm losing my mind. You know, so if racism, a legal system that sees black, all of it, climate uh, chaos, just, just put the peace. Because each piece is different, distinct, unique, but it's necessary. And we need more people who are willing to lose their minds right. when somebody else is suffering. So, Char, that is why they don't like people like me and Gary and Corey and Amy and so many others. Because I'm missing people who are also losing their mind, whether they're running for office or they're activists. Mm -hmm. That's why Black Lives Matter came to being. They were losing their mind, and rightfully so, because there's injustice and they know that that peace must be there for the picture to be complete. So everything that I need to know about politics and life, I am learning from a toddler. That's not like so a good I children. Can't, I can't get no peace yeah. <laughs> until we find that peace. Hello? Yeah. That's yeah, it, yeah, baby. Yeah, 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 Sorry, I'm working on that. Yeah. Oh, baby, that is gonna be that is gonna be a children's book. You better believe it. You better believe it. I, 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 but I don't feel that sense of urgency that you have. No, you know what I mean. Like the, 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 I hear them say, "Oh, the, it's the death of democracy," but it's like you're not governing like it. I said, I had a boss, uh, Mayor Michael R. White, the city of Cleveland. I used to work for. He would tell his cabinet all the time, "If your hair is on fire." Act like that's their right. Hair is that's on right. Fire. That's right. And that's what's happening right now. We need more people to act like their hair is on fire, and people who cannot get peace until we're giving people everything that they need to live a good life. Right. That is what must happen. We're not a poor nation. We can do these things. Absolutely. And as I illustrated, we're not the first ones to think of these things. They're mm -hmm. not radical. They're not out of touch with the American people. What is out of touch are these moderate types, these status quo types, because they set for the rest of their lives. Think about that. Ooh, yeah. Most of these people are set for the rest of their lives, their children and their children's children. Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to have pain or get sick and all that, but they set. But see, they don't show, they don't care about Big Mama and Big Daddy's people mm -hmm. being set. Whether, and I'm talking about Big Mamas in rural America urban America or suburban America, when people are suffering, we must act like it. We have the resources to lift people up so that they can live a good life. Why? I, I want to ask, I want to ask the, the club this. I mean, does it seem, or is it just me that we have a system, we have a system that does not see the value of poor people? Like, oh, of course. I, I mean, I, I that's been that's been since the beginning of time though. Since the beginning, it makes me angry. I, I'm not gonna lie. So they want to use angry black woman. Damn it! Let me be the first to say I'm mad as hell. Yeah, and I think we yeah. absolutely saw it magnified during the pandemic too. Yeah, and the pandemic is still going. Yeah, it's worse. It yeah. is just because some you know just because the shots in arms and 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 people are not masking up as much much and the elected officials are changing the rules on the mask and the CDC and all of that kind of stuff does not mean that the ripple effects the residual impact of the pandemic is gonna be felt for a very long time because people were suffering before the pandemic. The pandemic just exacerbated the suffering. That's all it did. I, I, what you said about, you know, poor people, like, you know, every, Martin Luther King Jr., when he made that shift to, you know, helping the poor, that's when he really became he a problem. A yeah. yeah. And, 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 and when he spoke out against the Vietnam War too, they were like, hold on brother, mm -hmm. now we tolerated, we tolerated you mm -hmm. talking about these civil rights, but mm -hmm. now you're talking about income? Mm -hmm. And you talking about bringing all the people together? Mm -hmm. All poor people? That's right. From every walk of life, because we outnumber them. Mm -hmm. To me, all of us are working class, and I, we make distinctions, and it drives me crazy. Unless you got a sugar daddy, a sugar mama, a sugar somebody, a trust fund, <laughs> you work. Now, you may have been blessed to be at the top of that chain within a working class people, but you still work. Mm -hmm. and, and any of us are just one major health scare away from having all that you have worked for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. being taken from you. You're right. So we all work in class. Now, I might be blessed to be up here within the working class, but I got to work for a living. 
And the fact that the systems that make up this country really don't care about ensuring that working class people, especially the working class people that are more at the barely middle part of that and also at the very lowest part of that working class, they need a lot more. And why can't we do it? Every other industrialized nation, for example, has Medicare for all. What's the deal? Why can't we why can't we do this? It is just an answer to owner donors, and we are allowing these corporations to really control politicians. It is legal in America to bribe politicians. And that's not to say that every corporation is bad. I have sat down with corporate leaders, because I sit down with Satan, himself or herself, if I'm going to get something for my people, Mm -hmm. and if I don't have to sell my soul to do it. Now, you you know, sometimes Satan can be a woman. You know what I mean? I mean, hey, I'd have met some of them. Mm -hmm. But it's about getting something for the people and not something for yourselves. For yourself, solely for yourself. And so we need more people who are willing to call the BS mm-hmm. and being willing to stand up to power, whether it's political or corporate power. We got to admit, all of these companies are making extraordinary sums of money. Right. At a certain point, this is greed. Mm-hmm. It's not about wealth, because I want you to be wealthy. I want you to be wealthy. I want you to be wealthy. I want to be wealthy. I was already poor. I ain't trying to do that again. It's, it's not a good feeling. Being poor is hard. I want the people I'm fighting for to be wealthy. Why am I fighting for all of these wonderful things if I just want people to stay in poverty? That's not the case. I want them to be wealthy in their health, in their mind, mm-hmm. their body, their soul. You talk a lot about the mind, the mental health. Mm-hmm. That is, that's wealth. What we are fighting against is excessive greed. Mm-hmm. How is it that even in the pandemic, the billionaire class, <laughs> made trillions of dollars combined, right. but meanwhile, back in the hoods where people misunderstood, right. they right. still and they was getting that PPP money too. Right. On top of it, playing playing games with the people. Why can't we have elected leaders call these people out? You know why? Because far too many of them raise money from those, these people, and then they can't they can't challenge them mm-hmm. because they need them. We need campaign finance reform. And then lastly, what I learned from a mentor of mine, and I have so many wonderful mentors. But th- this this whole notion that you can't serve that which you do not love. You can't serve that which, which you, you do, do not, not love. love. You got to have some kind of love. Right. Oh, um, got you, got you. Right. Yes, you cannot serve that which you do not love. Ooh. And at a base level, and Mayor Frank Jackson said this, at a base level, these people don't have a love for the people that they are serving. And that's why they can cavalierly not pass the George Floyd Police Act. That's why they can say, oh, it was the parliamentarian that didn't allow us to increase the minimum wage to $15 an hour. That is why they can say, oh, the George Floyd Act, uh, we might never get to that, even though we promised that. That's why they can say, oh, the, the, the climate, oh, we'll get to it when we get to it. Because, hell, some of them going to get on them rocket ships. Put them folks in. And go to Mars. That's it. Leave the rest of us down here to perish. You know, to that point, you can't love America then. And the reason I say that is because all of this stuff will come back to cannibalize you. That's right. If you don't take care of the people, they're going to be in your backyard looking for something to eat. Because we all connected. That's right. I I, I think it was Congresswoman Barbara Jordan who said what the people want is simple. They want an America as good as it's promised. And all of us have a role to play in creating that especially those elected, they have a higher obligation. But that doesn't absolve the obligation of corporate leaders Mm -hmm. or spiritual leaders or civic leaders like that puzzle. Every piece is different, distinct, unique, Mm. and necessary. Everything I need to know about life and politics. I'm learning from a okay. two-year-old, Oof. from a toddler. <laughs> Listen, I need y'all to go donate to uh, Senator Nina Turner's Absolutely. campaign. I don't care if you live in Ohio or not. What's the, yeah. what's the Nina website? NinaTurner.com, please. Time, talent, and treasure. We need you. In the mortal words of Fred Hampton, power to the people. I'm, about, I'm going to donate right now. I don't know why I just don't set up the monthly thing and let well, them do I it. Well, I think you've been supportive <laughs> of me. You really have. And I just... I'm I'm really happy that uh, the club, I feel very much a part of this family. I love you guys and all the great work that you do. And you tell a certain type of truth always that make people feel uncomfortable, and that's what we need. We need more people to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. We can't find no peace. And uh, vote, I mean, I am a, I'm, a, I'm a servant of the people. So no matter what happens in this race, I'm going to keep being, being the hell-raising humanitarian that I am. I'm going to keep standing up for the needs of the people who have the least. That is my mission. I think that's why God put me here on this earth, so I'm going to keep Raising hell for good. We appreciate you. Right. That's right. Yeah, and thanks. make sure you Love subscribe you to the Hello Somebody, Hello Somebody podcast. on the Black Effect Podcast hey. Network, baby. All there right. we go. <laughs> it's Nina Turner. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs>